Okay, we are live. I'm here with Kevin Rolls, the Soul Assassin. How are you? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I'm doing fine. So you recently had an, uh, an injury, which which led to surgery, uh, which which obviously uh, stings a little bit. So okay. what, what's your take on the matter right now? And like, does it get easier to deal with this kind of situations when you get older? Well, you know, I've been through this so many times before with uh, countless injuries. You know, I've broken mm. this hand three times prior and blown my knee out and among many other things. So in a lot of ways, it, it helps because you've been through it before. You kind of know what the deal is, you know, the time frame and how to deal with it mentally. But at the same time, that also makes it difficult, too, because you have been through it so many times before. And you just mm. sometimes you just don't want to do it anymore. You know, you, you get sick of the injuries and the setbacks and things like that. But, you know, look, you always have two choices is like give up or keep moving forward. And for me, it's keep moving forward. So um, the first day, two days were pretty rough. Uh, the pain was pretty severe, but, uh, you know, got through the hard part and it's feeling a little better now. So hopefully uh, in a few weeks, I'll be able to start punching again and get back to work. Mm. Uh, Muay Thai is obviously uh, quite a dangerous sport. Um, and yeah. how did you end up, end up, how did you end up doing Muay Thai? Because like it's less popular here in the West. Yeah, you know, I, I always loved fighting uh, boxing growing up. I love martial arts movies and Bruce Lee and things like that. Um, I always thought about boxing maybe uh, at some point, but but I really want I want to be able to kick people too, you know, and, and do everything. And I never really saw any any kind of fighting that had that, you know. There was karate and stuff like that, taekwondo, but that was more sparring kind of things. And uh, but no real no real fighting, not like you see in boxing. And um, Back in 1994, I was watching ESPN at like 2 o'clock in the morning, and they used to have fights on there all the time, um, and they just happened to have a Muay Thai fight, and I saw it, and I was hooked immediately. Uh, I knew that I knew that if I was ever going to do this, that Muay Thai is what it was going to be. Uh, I still didn't start for almost 10 years after that, but uh, I was hooked right away. Why did it take you 10 years to start? Uh, I was busy partying drinking my life away in vegas and you know mm. being a kid and you know not living very healthy and I, mm. it was one of those things that i knew if i was going to do it i was going to go all the way or not at all so i knew that i was going to have to quit drinking quit partying mm -hmm. quit hanging out with my friends you know doing all those things and i just wasn't ready to do that and it wasn't until you know unfortunately a long series of bad things happened and finally had a wake up call and mm. realized I was wasting my life and uh, finally turned it all around. Mm, like, can you can you tell me what the wake up call was? Like, what, what did well, you Well, there was a lot. There was a lot okay. actually. Um, um, several friends died. Um, I almost went to jail myself drinking and driving and mm. just, a, just a, lot of, a lot of situations like that. You know, it was a progressive thing over a few months that it. Things were just happening, and um, you know, I just just one day it just hit me in the face that I was wasting my life. Mm. Um, so Muay Thai uh, helped you get over the alcohol addiction. Um, did, did you think? Do you think that overcoming that addiction shaped you for the better? Well, it it, it really showed me. It gave me a lot of strength overcoming that, you know, and confidence in myself and showed me that I have the ability to overcome things and not mm. just, you know, stay stuck in certain situations because they're, because it's hard to get out of, you know, I think mm. it's a lot of times we don't, we just don't feel like we can make it, you know, and that's how mm. I felt, you know, I felt very defeated and hopeless, but I, I understood that I kind of had two choices to make. I either was going to, keep going down the road I was on and probably end up dead or mm -hmm. risk going after this thing that, you know, maybe I wouldn't be able to do or maybe I wouldn't be good at or who knows. But uh, I, I, I would rather go after something that 
I want and fail at it than, than keep achieving doing nothing. Mm. Um, but you ended up, uh, you, fight, you started to fight for you pretty late, late, right? Yeah, I was 23 when I had my first fight. Oh, damn. Oh, I, I was 26, so you're young. <laughs> yeah. um, how, how, did, how did you catch up with all the, the guys who were training since you were like six or eight? Because YouTube wasn't around back then, I think. No, but, not like, at all. You, you, you fought some pretty crazy opponents like Sanchai. Yeah. Um, it, it wasn't easy, obviously. It, it's one of those things where I just had to throw myself into the deep end, you know, and, and mm. when I was coming up and just, it was really just the mentality of everyone at that time, but, but especially myself, it was like, I'm going to fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. doesn't matter how big they are, how, how many fights they've had, whatever it is, it's like, you just show up and fight. And, and mm. that's really kind of how I developed over the years was going into these fights where I had all the odds stacked against me, you know, and each time, you, whether you win or lose, you really progress um, and strengthen yourself as long as you take it the right way and use it correctly. Um, and that that's really just what, what helped me develop. Also, for me, it was, you know, knowing that I put this off for so long. Mm -hmm. and, and avoided it for so long that as soon as I started, everything in my life was about being the best I could. And I was in the gym all day, every day. I lived there. Um, all I thought about was fighting and bettering myself and, you know, pushing it as much as I could. And I think that's what helped me develop a lot quicker than most people because uh, I was willing to put in the work. I was willing to sacrifice. I was willing to, um, you know, dive into the deep end where it's not safe and it's dangerous and it sucks sometimes. And, you know, most people, most people only want to fight if they can look good and, and win. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they don't really want to test themselves or they only want to test themselves to a degree. Um, where they're comfortable but that's not how you get better and that's that's mm. not how you um make a name for yourself you know you have to be willing to fail and and you have to be willing to set your sights a lot higher than than most ever will and i think for me it was that unending finish line that that i set my sights so high i, I knew i could never be good enough or or you know have enough fights or anything so it was it was always everything i did was playing catch up mm. you mentioned like the people who want to have the highs of fighting like how do you deal with like social media fighters because like um i lived in thailand for three months and yeah. I, I met one and he's kept on running he's kept on training but he was like i'm gonna knock this guy out in the second round and i was like it's not gonna happen but i didn't want to tell him because i didn't feel like i was the guy who should should have told them because I had one fight. Uh, yeah. And then I read your blog post and I was like, yeah, this is interesting. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's been kind of difficult, you know, but it really, like this day and age, there's so much of it out there. But even before social media, there was people like that in the game. You know, there was a lot of people, uh, not a lot, but there were people that were out there just to kind of, sh they show up at the gym, they pretend, you know, they tell their friends they're fighting and all these things, but when it comes down to it, they never showed up to fight or always had excuses. So that kind of mind frame and mentality has always been around. It's it's so much worse now with the, um, the exposure people can get even without doing anything and how easy it is to talk a lot and talk a good game and pretend like you're a certain way. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's frustrating, especially when you see so many people sacrificing so much and a lot of times they're not the ones who get the attention or that they deserve. But for me, it's always been a thing where the people who know, they know who's real and who's not. And, and in the long run, that truth will come out, you know, as long as you just stay true to yourself, you know, put in the hard work stay humble, stay focused, 
you know, the, the real people come out in the end, in the long run. Um, it's, it's easy to pretend for a while and, and throw up smoke and mirrors, but eventually the truth comes out and people get exposed, you know, and, and, and the real ones stay in the game. Mm. Are, you, are you a fan of trash talk? I'm not, I, I don't want to say I'm not a fan of it, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I am a fan of people being genuine who they are and how they feel, you know, so if you really don't like somebody for whatever reason and, you know, you have this issue with them, I don't, I don't necessarily feel like you have to be, res I mean, I think you should always be respectful to a degree, mm -hmm. but, but I think, I think everybody should just be honest with, with how they feel. The problem mm -hmm. is people especially these days think that it's what you're supposed to do it's what's expected um that's what fighters do and that's not the case at all you know it's it's um more often than not that's not the case and most fighters are very humble and, and respectful and all these things and but when it comes showtime we feel the need to put on this theater and um i think it's um not very helpful in the long run. I, I think it's counterproductive. It might it might bring some views for a little bit for a short period of time, but mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's a positive thing. Uh, I don't think it's a positive thing when people are doing it because they feel it's what they should do. I think it's positive when people are honest and in in that you know like my buddy Joe Schilling, he was he was always that way and very vocal yeah. about how he feels about people mm -hmm. and. You know, I'm the complete opposite of him, and he started feeling like he should be more uh, <laughs> nice to people and things like that. And I was like, and it, and it came off very ungenuine. And I, I told him, I was like, don't don't feel the need to be nice either. I said, you just don't need to go out of your way to be mm. a jerk. I'm like, if you don't like somebody, be honest about that. If you do like them, be mm. respectful, and and that's good too. The the this world and this fight game needs genuine and honesty and, and people to be real it doesn't need cookie cutters of the same thing over and over and over again and that's 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 what you get a lot of times well uh, from a lot from boxing a lot from mma um, um, yeah. you don't see it as much in in muay thai but it's still there um on, on some levels um in some cases and it's it's something i hope doesn't ever gain traction um in in muay thai for, for sure mm -hmm. That is the one thing that I missed when I was fighting because there was a language barrier. So uh -huh. the guy didn't understand me. But he was bigger than me. So I wanted to talk trash to him because he was like, he was picking on me because I was smaller than him. And I was like, no, I want to talk trash to you just yeah. because you're bigger than me and picking on me. That's uh -huh. the one thing that I missed. Yeah. Um, but I asked because like you have, well, I started off in MMA. So I'm going to use MMA as an example. You have Dominic Cruz, Conor McGregor. They are genuine. That's what I meant with trash talk. I don't mean like Colby Covington or I don't know or um, Henry Cejudo, you know, who like more play the act and try to be the guy instead of yeah. being themselves. Yeah, you know I mean? like, like I'm I'm all for it if it's if it's who that person is. What I don't like is when people run their mouths and then as soon as the fight's over, they're all oh that was just for show and it's it's just fake to me and and. Mm. And, you know, no matter how much you say it's for show, I feel like it has to be a part of who you are because I, I, like, I would never do that even if it was for show. I, I, I just, I wouldn't. I refuse to play, play a game and pretend, mm. pretend that I'm somebody that I'm not. I, I wouldn't do that even if, uh, you know, they paid me to do it. Uh, this was something that I, I said after the fight. Somebody asked me, like, because sometimes I, I give like these witty remarks. Like my thing was, I like trash talking because I think if you're if you're if you're a fighter and you get um, frustrated by the mental aspect of some fighters, you're not a great fighter because like that's part of the game as well. Like, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean it's 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 definitely a part of the game and something some people use very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, you just better make sure you can back it up because a lot of people <laughs> try to do that and it backfires on them and, and and it's not it's not healthy and and like I said, when it's genuine, I think it it comes off that way, um, 
but when it's fake and phony that even if it works out a little bit it's it's gonna backfire and and then you're left trying to um, save face and say oh that was just that was just for the show or, or, or all of a sudden you want to come off as a um, a humble person and mm. you know you either are or you aren't mm. Do you think you benefited uh, from starting your career career later than most people? I do, actually. You know, I think for me, a good thing about starting late is my focus. You know, I was like, I knew exactly why I was doing this. You know, what mm -hmm. my purpose was. I didn't have a lot of those younger years where I'm still partying and other focuses on my life and distractions and those kinds of things. So in that aspect, it helped a lot. Um, another good thing is I never had a point when I had those young years where I just felt good and didn't have to, uh, didn't have to diet much or didn't have to train very hard and was always in shape. You know, I never, I never really had that. I don't, I don't know what that feels like. So if I did, I'd probably feel, a lot worse now because I'd have a, a, a good place to remember, you know, like, like a, a bar that I set when I was young and felt great. You know, I started late later, so I don't really have that. So I, I, I feel great still, you know, I actually feel a lot better in a lot of ways than I ever did. Um, so, so in that aspect, it's helped, you know, clearly the older you get, the, the injuries and the wear and tear and, and that kind of thing comes into play. But, you also get a lot smarter too with age and that helps in a lot of aspects not do a lot of stupid things or or um you know sidetrack yourself that a lot of people do when they're younger mm -hmm. um how do you keep the the fire burning in such a long career because like if somebody says kevin ross is fighting i say oh it's an exciting fight <laughs> it's it hasn't been easy you know i've I go through the same doubts and fears and times I want to quit just like everybody else does. Uh, you know, uh, especially after injuries like this injury, uh, I was like, you know, maybe maybe this is it. I don't know. And, and this was after a year layoff. You know, after my last fight, I was going through a lot of changes with moving and gyms and also losses. And, you know, that I was left wondering if... if one, if I can still do this, and two, if I still want to do this. Um, and I, I had to sit with that for a while. And, you know, I, I, I took a step back, which I'd, I've never done. I've never taken a break, a real break, in 16 years of doing this. I've, uh, you know, I think the longest time I've ever taken off is maybe two weeks. <laughs> and this, this was, uh, I forced myself to take a month off of no training and, and, it was really difficult because every day I felt like I'm just watching this train pass me by, you know, and, and I'm, I'm every day that you're not getting better, you're getting worse in a lot of ways. But I knew that I needed to do it. I knew that I needed to take a step back and, and see things from the outside perspective. And it's hard. It's hard at times when you're in the midst of it, um, the good and the bad. It, it's, it's hard to really see things in the whole picture um, when you're in it all the time. So I forced myself to step back. But in doing that, I knew maybe I wouldn't be able to get going again, even if I wanted to. And that was really difficult. But it was just, uh, you know, one day at a time, like anything else, getting a little bit better and stronger and sharper. And, you know, now I feel better than I've ever felt. Um, and then this happened. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know that 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 makes it difficult and it makes it it's frustrating and you know especially at this stage and at this age and everything I'm you know I'm always questioning like how long can I keep doing this but and should I keep doing this but I feel good um, you know this is just a setback but prior to this I was feeling better than I've ever felt in, in such a such a long time and. Uh, you know, I just, I need to take that and move forward and um, not let this sideline me because uh, it'd be very easy to just take this and 
not not want to go through it anymore because it's a lot of work, you know, and it's a lot of pain and s sacrifice. But it's what I love to do, and it's what I feel I I was meant to do, and what I I feel like I should still be doing. Um, so I'm gonna keep doing it as long as I can. Hmm. When you started, were you like, I'm going to set a retirement date or? <laughs> no, you know, and that's something people have always asked, how long are you going to keep doing this? Uh, they've been asking me that since the day I started. Um, and I've always had the same answer. The day I started to today, it's always been as long as I love it, as long as I'm healthy enough to keep doing it uh, and, and physically able to um, and, and also still progressing to a degree, then I'm going to keep keep doing it um if if obviously if i didn't have the love for it I, there's no way in hell i would do this mm. <laughs> you know like why would you sacrifice so much for for so little if you didn't love it and you know that's that's what to me sets muay thai apart you know almost everyone that's in it well maybe not so much anymore but but definitely when i was coming up the only people that were in it were in it because they loved it you know nobody else was doing this um, nowadays, maybe it's not a hundred percent of the people, but it's still a high number. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's what I love to do. Mm. Did the landscape change because of the money that got involved or? Yeah. Um, you know, I, there's not much more money now than there was okay. uh, before. Obviously there is for people at my level. Um, but how many people are at that level, you know, especially in the States, like a handful, maybe. And um, even then, it's it's still not real money, you know, but uh, it's definitely better. I can't complain about it, um, considering where it used to be. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing, the exposure is more now, you know, one with there being bigger promotions that are on TV and obviously with social media and that kind of thing. So, so um it's out there more now, you know, it's, you tell people you did Muay Thai before and they looked at you like, what the hell is that? You know, I don't know. And you had to tell everybody it was kickboxing, which just, you know, makes your heart hurt because <laughs> it's not. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's uh, getting recognized at places from people who aren't fighters that are in the gym is that, that was always, that was a strange thing. Um, you know, it's like, how did you even see me? And then, you know, nowadays it's on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, even, even you know, 10 years ago, it was like even crazier because I was like, how do you even know who I am? But like, there's no TV. There's, you know, there's no anything. Um, so the, the popularity has grown. Um, the exposure has grown. Um, but good and bad come together. So equally, you know, the... The amount of people that are in it for the wrong reasons, and, and that goes across the board with with promoters, fighters, trainers, um, that progresses as well. So you have to you got to take the good with the bad. And there's a lot of times that I do wish it was like it was 10, 15 years ago. You know, mm -hmm. it was it was pure back then. Um, it was harder in a lot of ways, but it, but it was also better in a lot of ways too you know it's it wasn't uh it wasn't as much of a business as it was a, a passion for people mm -hmm. and you know for me that's always been the important thing is like doing things out of passion not for ulterior motives and if they're there that's great but but when you meet someone that does this genuinely and, and for the right reasons it's it's a uh, it's a breath of fresh air, you know, where where it used to be, um, everybody was that way. When you when you say it used to be harder, do you mean like pure tight training, like running before training, then two hours of training? No, no. I mean, training for me has always been hard. You know, I've I mm. push myself, um, you know, harder than anybody else could push me. So that's never changed. Um, I guess harder in the fact that there wasn't, um, there was no exposure and there was definitely n no money. I mean, we were all paying to fight. Um, mm. It was harder in the way that 
at a certain level, there there was really nowhere to go as far as fights went other than overseas. Like if you weren't willing to travel um, or to move overseas, once you reached a certain level, like very low level pro, there was nowhere to go to fight here in the States. And that made it difficult. That made it difficult to have any real goals or aspirations because you knew that once you got to a certain level, you were kind of tapped out. Like, you know, after you, after you beat everybody in America, what are you going to do? Like, you can travel overseas, but you're basically paying to do that. You know, you're paying mm -hmm. to fight. You're paying to train. You're doing all these things, and it's, it's a lot of sacrifice. And not only that, you're now you're going up against people who are a hundred times better, you know, and have a hundred times more experience. And, you know, even to this day, people, people don't want to do that. But that's why you don't see – you only see very few fighters who are able to – go to that next stage because there's such a huge gap in between the highest level there is here and then medium or low level uh, for the rest of the world. Mm. It, it, it's a big jump and it's a, it's a, it's a tough one. And I do understand why most people don't do it, but you know, if that's what you want with your life, you're going to have to make that sacrifice or it's just never going to happen. Mm. Do you prefer uh, fighting in Thailand or fighting like in the West? Because like uh, I am, um, when I had my first Muay Thai fight, people were like, "You're fucking crazy," and I was like, "Yeah, but I I, pref I prefer I prefer it here in Thailand over in well, I'm I'm from Belgium, so over Belgium because like in Belgium is basically the bell rings, two guys swing for the fences, one guy goes to sleep, everybody happy. But I'm like, that's that's not that's not a fight, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I prefer I prefer fighting people with skills, and you know that that can be anywhere. Um, but yeah, that that brawling, mindless fighting style. Um, that I mean, that uh, one part of that too is you just got to get through that level of of people, you know, because in the beginning everybody's like that to some extent because they don't really know what they're doing and unfortunately in the beginning a lot of those people are the ones who end up being successful early on the ones who are just crazy and brawlers and swinging for the fences you know they they do really well but eventually when people develop their skills are going to overcome that craziness you know and those aren't the ones who make it to the next stage um you know that's why I, I try to tell people not to worry so much in the beginning about i mean you shouldn't worry so much about it at all but wins and losses as long as you're progressing that's what's important you know as long as you're getting better each time um getting your experience strengthening yourself sharpening up um you know the wins and the losses are going to come but but mm -hmm. if you look at the bigger picture and what your purpose is and what the purpose of all of this is, then you can you can take it and use those things much better because just because you're winning doesn't necessarily mean you're getting better. And just because you're losing doesn't necessarily mean you're getting worse. It's about who you're fighting, how you're fighting, what happened, all of these things. You know, it's, it's a lot more complex than a win and a loss could ever be. Is that a mindset that you always had or is it something that you took over from Thailand? Uh, I definitely always had it. I mean, I came up under ties, so I'm sure they helped instill that in us. But I think, uh, I think, I, well, I, I had, I was forced to realize that because I lost my very first fight. I, I got stopped. Okay. Um, yeah, it was one of those things that next day I was like, geez, maybe I can't do this. Mm. And then it was really difficult because I, I progressed so quickly from the time I started and, and really just came to this naturally and, and progressed very well. Um, and then going into my first fight, you know, I felt like I was just on my way to the top, you know, like nothing's going to stop me. And that happened and it really just shattered my world. I was like, maybe, maybe I'm not what I think I am. Maybe I'm not that good. Maybe I'm not meant for this and, and all of these things. And, what I was forced to realize is if I can't win 
am I still going to do this? If, if I'm not guaranteed success, do I still want this? And the answer is, yeah, I'm going to still keep doing this because that winning and losing is, is just one aspect of, of it. You know, it's, of course we all want to win, but if that's the only reason you're doing this, you should probably do something else because, uh, I think that's a, a very shallow thing. There's, there's so much more to it than the outcome of a fight. And as I said, I, I was forced to face that day one and on Fortunately, a lot of people didn't have to. You know, they went on these really long, undefeated streaks. The problem was, eventually, you do lose, and and mm-hmm. a lot of those people never fought again. They they couldn't recover from it. They they um, mentally, it was very damaging. I think another problem too is when you when you win, you're not forced to. dissect what you could have done better you can still do it but but it has to be intentional you know where when you lose you're you're kind of forced to face your weaknesses and as well as your strengths and and you know like what could i do better what 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 will what uh what changes do i need to make what what adjustments were there any or did the fight just go the way it went you know and but when you win and you win and you win a lot of times you win, and then the next time you, you don't train as hard, and you win again, and it's this um, negative reinforcement, um, thinking that you're doing all the things correctly because you're winning, but just that aspect alone will backfire in the long run if you're not pushing yourself. And a, and a lot of people don't push themselves as much when they're winning all the time. Mm. If, if they don't have the right mentality, I would say. Okay. okay. So in the begin in the beginning, you you fought a lot, like uh, frequently. Like was yeah, that your mentality? I probably fought. Uh, I think I fought nine nine or ten times that first year. See, that was like that was a good thing when I was coming up. There was amateur fights all the time. Um, you know, well they call them smokers because they were like uh, inner gyms. You know, uh, gyms fighting gyms, that kind of thing. So we could fight almost every week. Um, every month for sure there were there was fights all over um, the country uh, all up and down California Vegas Arizona Utah you would just pile into a van <laughs> with a bunch of other fighters show up to a fight and hope there was someone there you could get matched up with and you know that that also helped develop a lot of um, my mentality and strength it was showing up knowing you might go in there against somebody who outweighs you by 30 pounds or has 50 fights already or, or who knows you know we didn't we didn't pick and choose who we fought like like a lot of people do nowadays we didn't only take the fights we thought we could win it was i want to fight regardless of who it is and whatever happens is going to happen and i'm going to do everything i can to win this fight and regardless i'm going to get back to work come monday and get ready for the next one and the next one and the next one. And that was just our mentality, you know, and that's why um, I think so many of us coming up at that time progressed to the level that we did um, because we weren't doing this for views on social media. We weren't doing this for likes. We weren't doing this to be popular. We were, we were, it was almost the opposite. We were doing this because it wasn't popular and nobody knew about it. And, it was underground and all of these things, you know, so, so we all had that same mentality of raise your bar every time, fight the best you can fight, regardless of who it is, and then get back to work and get better and then fight and then see where you're at and then get back to work and get better. And this was an ongoing thing from, from the day I started. That sounds like an amazing lifestyle. I'm pretty jealous yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I, I really loved it. And I'm grateful, I'm grateful to have come up during that time and with the people that I did. Um, had a lot of great experiences, a lot of great fights, a lot of hard, hard fights. But uh, it developed so much character and strength and um, just 
instilled that love for this sport that 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 has never gone away even even through the changing of the landscape and the way things are and the mentality now it's uh you know that that's never changed for me mm -hmm. uh what would you say to people who want to start fighting but are like at a a bit older well, older according to society you know like my 20s what would you say, what what kind of advice would you give them Well, I try to tell people that your age can never dictate what you do and don't do. You know, of course, there are um, levels to, as we get older, we're going to regress a little bit and slow down a little bit. But far too often, we use that as an excuse to not do things, you know, or to, to, use as a crutch for weakness you know we say oh well i'm too i'm too old i'm too poor i'm too weak i'm too skinny i'm too fat i'm too whatever we we use all these things as excuses to you know to to really make us make us feel better about not going after this thing you know we we convince ourselves that we can't make it and that makes us feel a little bit better about not trying and The unfortunate thing is eventually one day you're going to be faced with the fact that you just were too afraid to go after it, regardless of your circumstances, mm -hmm. and you let those fears keep you from something maybe you could have done. Who knows how successful you could be, but you could have done it, and you're going to live your life in regret. You know, that was... That was a big thing for me, you know, I, it took me 10 years to start from almost 10 years from the time I learned about the sport and what, what I realized was, I don't know how good I can be at this. I don't know if I can win one single fight, hmm. but I'm never going to know if I don't try. And I can sit here and convince myself of, of all these reasons about why I can't do this and, and genuine reasons and, and reasons no one would blame me for, but... I'm the one that has to look myself in the mirror and know I know the truth, even if nobody else does. And and I never want to have to face that, you know, and, and, and question that. And I don't ever want to live my life and wonder that what if question will, will keep you up nights, man. And I I don't ever want to have that. You know, I live I lived that way for far too long, for so much of my life up until when I finally turned everything around, you know, I, I lived in fear and doubt and denial and all of these things um, because I just, I was too scared to go after something that I might fail at or might never make it to. But I realized like, is that really the question? Like who, if I can't be the best in the world, that's okay. I can still be the best that I can be. And who knows what that is? Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. And and the only way to find out is to do it. And that's what I realized. And that's what I try to tell people is you just never know what's going to happen. And regardless, you're going to get better as a human being by going after these things that, that are difficult. You're going to progress. You know, may, yeah, maybe you might not be a good fighter, but mm -hmm. it's going to help you in so many other aspects of your life that that going after a difficult task whether it's fighting or anything for that matter is such an important thing to do because it's so much easier not to it's so much easier to just sit here and kind of give up but you slowly give up on all these aspects of life until you've just given up on everything and, and um, allowed yourself to become this defeated person and unfortunately that's that's the majority or a, a big percentage of the world is people living in defeat and the the thing is you you got to understand that you don't have to stay there even if you you are there and have to let that um let your circumstances overcome you you can always turn things around and and it's never too late and you know that's i just try to remind i remind myself of that about that constantly you know because because um You know, I, as I said, I have I have all those doubts and fears that I had the day that I started. I still have those today. They've never once gone away. 
and um, mm -hmm. you just learn how to deal with it better and um, you learn how to view it better and to understand what fears and doubts are and it's important to face them and to confront them a lot of times we try to ignore them and you know shut them out but eventually they're going to creep back in somehow and it's important to it's like it's just like sadness you know it's it's important to feel these things and, and to go through the process uh, a lot of times we um we try to block them out you know and and and, and not recognize them but those end up backfiring in the long run long run you know uh, i would say like feelings are meant to be felt it's important to feel mm -hmm. things if you feel happy, you feel sad, whatever it is, like feel it. You just don't want to get stuck in that, and you don't want to let it hinder you in your life. That, like, that's what's important. Do Do you think it's like getting worse these days? Because, well, I'm only 26, so you have more life experience than me. But like, what I tend to experience is like when I see people, it's like they live their life like they live on social media. It's like it has to be perfect in everything yeah. they do, and it's like. When you ask them, like, how are you? Oh, everything is going perfect. And I'm like, that sounds weird, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's it's tricky these days um, because everything, I mean, it's, it's, it's always been this way. But again, with the uh, social media and the internet and everything, it's like really shrunk in the world to where we're all connected. So many people just live their lives in comparison to other people. They... they they try to compete and pretend and put on this show and, um, you know, it's, it's, everybody wants to put their highlights up of their lives and that's not real. That's, that's so fake and phony and ungenuine and, and, and when you start believing that that is who people really are, you try to be that way too. And it, makes you a very shallow, empty, broken person, no matter what you look like mm -hmm. on your front of the world. And, and yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an epidemic these days, and I don't really see it slowing down, unfortunately. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, it's only getting worse. It, it, it's difficult, but I think it's, it's really a, a mentality you just have to have. Like, you can never compare yourself to anybody else, you know. Um, you, you, you just have to try it and be the best person you can be in, in whatever, whatever it is that you do. It's, 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 it's not about comparison, you know, like I don't compare myself to the greatest fighters of all time. I, 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 I use them as a, a bar to set, like I can never be this good maybe, but you know, those are the sights I'm setting for myself. Um, using it as a positive way, not in a defeated way, not in a, I can never do that. So I shouldn't even try way or putting on a, um, being phony, you know, I think, mm -hmm. I think, I think that's, that's what's important. As I said before, it's just about being genuine and being real and being honest and being, being who you are, being you. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, uh, people have like a wrong perception age, age these days because like I, I still remember this when I turned 21 my dad came up to me and he was like enjoy your birthday because after this it, go, it goes downhill and I was like what already? Fuck! <laughs> uh, yeah that's rough. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah um, I think so much of life we are either taught the wrong things or not taught them at all you know and we're very we're very misguided in, in so many ways and our view of the world is so limited and until we really get out there and understand things better um you know it's like when you're a kid you think adults and your parents and everybody like they know everything and everything figured out and um everything they tell you is true and all of these things that are happening and and we're we grow up with this mind frame that's drilled into us only to later realize like so much of it is smoke and mirrors you know so much of it is bullshit so much of it is um ignorance and and a lot of there can be a lot of negativity in that but 
Um, it's important to, you know, you got to take everything with a grain of salt. You know, I, 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 I try to I try to view everything as, as a learning or a teaching um, example. You know, it's like I can learn from everybody, even if it's learning what not to do. You know, uh, it's a mentality that really developed uh, coming up in the gym I did. It's like we trained with everybody, you know, the kids, the adults, big, small, girls, guys. And you can, a lot of people, they only want to train with like the best. And, you know, that's great and all until you are the best in your gym. And then what are you supposed to do? Um, you're going to run out of training partners very quickly. And if you realize there's always something you can work on, there's always something you can learn. Um, even if what somebody is telling you is incorrect um, or, you know, in a fighting aspect, even if the person you're going with isn't very technical or very good, there's going to be people you fight that aren't very technical and very good. So it's important to learn how to combat these things. And the same goes for life. You know, a lot of the stuff we're told and taught is incorrect or it's coming from people who are uneducated or biased or all these other things that it can be. So as long as you know that, I think that's such an important thing to instill in um, kids. It's like you can't just blindly listen to people. You know, it's, yeah, of course it's important to um, respect people, especially adults and people have been there. But that doesn't mean, one, that they know what the hell they're talking about, or two, they might not even be an honest, good person. So you might be listening to bullshit. And I think the the older you get, the more you realize that I, there aren't really a, I, adults. <laughs> There's just a bunch of grown up kids running around. You know, it's 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 kind of funny to think about, but it's like the older you get, or at least for me, anyway, it's like I don't really feel. I feel like I'm still surrounded by just a bunch of kids, you know, or grown up kids. You know, in that like when I look at people younger, yeah, I feel older but i still feel the same i did 20 years ago i still feel young in a lot of ways and older in a lot of ways and the people i look around me like if this was 20 years ago i'd be looking at them like older old people you know adults all these things and then you get there and you realize well nothing's really that different it's just a, it's just a bunch of people trying to do their best um you know i think uh, i think rogan did a, a bit on this and he was talking about you know, adults, and he's like, how we realize, like, every, nobody knows what the hell is going on. We're just, <laughs> we're just all out here winging it. You know, it's like, you think, you think coming up that people have things figured out. Nobody has anything figured out. People are just doing their best, and some people seem to know more than others, and some people have certain things figured out more than others, but nobody really knows what the hell is going on. Like, we're just trying to figure it, we're all figuring it out as we go. You know, we're all, we're all, it's all trial and error really with everything because even if you follow the way somebody else did it, you still have to do it your own way. Um, mm. you know, and again, what goes for fighting goes for life. You can't, you can use other people as guides, but you have to do it your own way. You will always do it your own way. And, um, that's, what's so important. You can't, you can't copy anybody else. You know, you can use them for inspiration, you know, like when it comes to techniques and things and things you want to work on and be better at, but you still got to do it your own way. You're your own person, you're your own body type, you're your own mentality and emotional makeup and all of these things. Like we have to, we have to live this life our own way and, and blaze our own trail. And the more we keep from trying to emulate other people or, or, compare ourselves to other people, the, the, the better it is for everybody because the world needs the uniqueness of each person. Um, the fighting world needs the uniqueness of each person. Um, you know, that's kind of the problem that there is in fighting nowadays. Uh, you know, use UFC as an example. There, you know, 15 years ago, fighters were so unique you know, and so much their own person, like you knew every single fighter and you knew 
all their personalities and each one was so different than the other. And nowadays, it's just like everybody's a cooker cutty, cookie cutter version of each other. Mm-hmm. For the most part, it, you know, there's always going to be people that stand out. Um, and a lot of that, you know, obviously comes from the organization. It's like um, before it seemed like people were promoted when they would just go out there and give it their all, you know, which is, you know, something that um, like in Japan, that, that uh, that's the mentality is like it's about the it's about who you are in there, not necessarily about the wins and the losses. And mm-hmm. when that begins to change, you lose so much um so much of the purity and the depth of who people are because now instead of being genuine they're like well i can't do this can't do that i can't risk this i can't risk that because if i lose i'm gonna get cut and you know it it hinders a lot of growth i feel and um you know it's it's the same thing in all sports really i mean you look at like the the golden era of muay thai like those fighters were so unique and, and 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 so amazing and each one was 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 so different you know but not so much anymore you know that you're always going to have a few here and there mm-hmm. but a lot of them a lot of times it's like it's like watching the same fight every time every time over and over and over again because we've kind of lost that um our personality, our, our genuine genuineness, and and you know, I, I hate to see that, and I, you know, I, that's why I try to stay true to who I am, regardless of whether it's a good or a bad thing for my career or, or the sport or whatever. You know, I just try to be honest with who I am, the with the good and the bad. He mm. talks about like taking, um, well, yeah, taking your own road in life, like. How did you manage to get by in the beginning years of your career? Because like there was no money in it. Like and you mentioned before you slept in the gym. Like and was it like hard to find the balance between like if you had a job between a job, training, friends? Yeah, when I first started I was going to school full time and working full time. Uh and yeah, it was very difficult. I I was like halfway through my degree when I started training and initially I, I just wanted to quit school you know I was like this is what I want to do for the rest of my life screw school uh, I'm never gonna do this like I was only doing it to kind of pass the time and you know find something better to do anyway mm-hmm. but it was also one of those things for me it was it was important to finish um, and to complete this task that I set out to do regardless of if I was ever going to use it or not I, I didn't want to give up just because something better came along, you know. So mm. um, for me, it was important to finish, and I did. And yeah, it was a, extremely difficult in the beginning, um, you know, go, doing all those things. And then after I graduated, uh, you know, it was like around that time I, I moved into the gym. I uh, I had kind of really two choices to make. I mean, you know, you can still do it. Obviously, I could have had a actual job and just train late in the evenings or first thing in the mornings but I wanted to give everything I had to this sport and Mm. I knew how far behind I was I wasn't willing to half-ass it you know or 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 I already had enough working against me I couldn't I couldn't have work working against me you know I'd, I'd rather I'd rather live in a closet and be able to train every day and know that I gave my all to this, um, you know, even if I'm living on the streets, because this was more important to me. You know, I, I can always go to school or, or get a job or, or work on making money later. You know, this has a finite timeline, you know, fighting, um, you know, there's a day that I'm not going to be able to do this anymore. And mm. I knew that coming up, and I was willing to sacrifice everything I had to in order to make that happen. Now, that's not to say that everybody has to do that. There's plenty of people who have jobs and families and still make it to a very high level in fighting. And it's it's 
that much more difficult, of course. The more distractions you have and outside influences, the, the harder it is. So you don't necessarily have to use that as an excuse not to do this because you still can. And there's, there's a lot of people out there who did have all of those things still and, and were able to make it. Um, but for me, it was, it was all or nothing, you know, and, and mm. you know, again, that's why I, I feel I was able to progress so quickly and do all the things I was able to do because I didn't have any other distractions in my life. You know, it was this and that's it. And, you know, it's, you know, a lot of, you know, even to, to this day and even back then, you always get the people come up and say, oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do this. You can. Yeah. I was like, I'm living in a closet in the gym and, and sleeping with cockroaches and all these horrible things. Like anybody can do just about anything. Most people aren't willing to sacrifice what it takes to do it. That's the real problem. So anytime someone says, I wish, I just want to like smack them upside the head because you can, you just aren't willing to sacrifice whatever it is to make it. And that's okay. That's okay. You don't have to, and you don't have to want to, but don't pretend that you would if only that's, that's such a cheap excuse to make that, that, and it, 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 um, it breaks down the ones who are sacrificing, you know, it, 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 it cheapens what they're doing. They're, they're giving up everything in their lives to do this. And you come in saying, oh, I would if only. Like, you think everybody has excuses about why they can't. Everyone who makes it has excuses about why they can't. But they go for it anyway. You know, that that's what separates people is the ones who make excuses and the ones who use those same excuses to get better and to move forward anyway and not stay stuck where they are at. And that's the only difference in... in whether people make it or whether they don't and whether you use excuses for good or whether you use them to not try. So you had no income at all during this period? I would do like, well, I, 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 I taught at the gym. Um, so that helped a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I, I had enough to eat and um, sometimes put some gas in my car and that was it. Wow, but wow. that's all I needed. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I had a roof over my head. I had food and that's all I cared about. Mm. <laughs> Makes me nostalgic to Thailand. Yeah. I, yeah. I was, I was, just, I didn't sleep in the gym. I still had a hut, but still I, I like, I didn't had, I basically had like some clothes, my training gear and the hut and a fan. I didn't even have air conditioning and I was so happy. Yeah, I mean, it, those things, like, when you simplify your life, it really allows you to focus on and view what's important, you know, and that's kind of the problem with the world in a lot of ways is we look at so many things and view so many things and care about so many things that don't matter at all. We just think that they do because we're, we're used to it and we put, we put time and energy into these things and because of the way they look or the way they make us feel. But when you strip away all the clutter and, and you're able to focus on what's important, um, it really is, a, it's a beautiful thing um, to see and to feel. And it, it, it can help you out, I think, in a lot of ways because it trims out the excess that happens in so many people's lives. Like force yourself to have nothing <laughs> and you start to recognize what's important you know when you go to other countries that have nothing they're living in poverty they're living in dirt um you know and they're happy you know and they're friendly and they love each other and they give strangers things that they don't even have you know it it shows you the the mentality that we all should have um but unfortunately don't because our world is uh, motivated by greed and corruption and all these horrible things. But it's such a beautiful thing to see and to recognize, you know, and to, I think it's an, such an important thing for 
everyone to do at some point in their life like like go somewhere where people have nothing not where people have nothing in america because people that have nothing in america are still rich compared to yes. most other parts of the world and and most people here that especially ones that don't travel they have no concept of what it means to struggle and 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 what it means to be poor and what it means to be suffering and um it's like so many of us are, are run around like spoiled brats you know because mm. we don't recognize how much we have even when things are hard you know even when things aren't going our way we have so much so much to be thankful and grateful for yet we're just trying to compare ourselves to who's ever above us and the next and the next and the next and and not grateful for the things that we do have um i think the key to that is is to have balance because you still want to progress and be better, but don't do it in a way where it's like I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm um I'm, I'm in com in comparison to all these others, and you know your view and everything in your life is shitty because it's not what they have. Or like be grateful for what you have, regardless of how much or how little that is, and and you know realize how much worse it can always be no matter how bad it is it can always be worse and uh you know if we can instill that mentality in people and the world will be a much better place mm. do you think it's getting harder to find places like that like where you basically have nothing because like when i arrived in kupanyang like everybody was like you're gonna have a culture shock and the only thing that shocked me was like 50% of the people were like Westerners and I was like, oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's more difficult now than it used to be, of course. Um, everything is becoming Westernized and we're, we're losing our cultures and we're using, we're losing our individuality and that's a worldwide epidemic, you know, and it goes goes through every aspect of life just like I was saying with with fighting you know we're losing our individuality in the purity and the love and the genuineness of who we are as people and that comes across in everything that we do and I feel eventually we're just going to be this robotic world where everybody's the same everybody has the same everybody is the same and I don't think that's a very positive thing you know i think of course of course you don't want people to struggle and you don't want people to you know you want everybody to have everything but at the same time struggling and going through difficult times is what makes people who they are you know it's like if everything went well we would have a lot of weak minded and body <laughs> people in the world you know it wouldn't be it's not a uh, progression isn't always positive you know, it's not uh, it's not always a good thing. It can be a good thing as long as you maintain that mentality. And that's a very difficult thing to do. Um, to, it's like maintaining that struggling mentality even when you're not. And the people who can do that are the ones who will stay the same regardless of where they're at in life. And that's such a rarity in this world but uh you know it's uh yeah it's tough but that's hard right because you have like i think it's plato with his three three generation rule i don't know if you're familiar with that one well where there's like the grandparents the parents and the kids yeah where like they build a dub the second generation has a kind of comfort like i'm on paper i'm third generation because my grandfather built build it up after the war and it's like he was like, you have, you guys have no idea how much comfort you have in comparison to when he was young. And he was like, yeah. this, this is probably the weakest generation that I ever saw. Yeah, yeah and it, it is. And it's, gonna, it's not getting better. It's getting worse and weaker. Even though on the outside, things look good. You know, people have more money. There's booming businesses and all these things. But it's just, it's the same thing with uh, like... Social media is what's going on in the entire world. What looks good on the outside is really detrimental on the inside. You know, everybody has a good face on, 
Everybody has these clothes on, the look on, the car, the house, all these things. But we're weakening as individuals and as humanity. And we're losing our character. And you know, that's going to be detrimental. Like eventually it's all going to come crashing down or just flatten out, which is just as bad. You know, mm. I, I'd, I'd rather it crash because then it can rebuild if it flattens out. Um, that's a much more difficult thing. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just the theme of the world right now. And that's been an ongoing for as long as I can remember. Mm. Um, after a while, your, um, your fighting career started, of course, like when, when your career was like starting to peak, like how did you find balance between like friends, family, relationships, other projects and training? For, ex for example, did you make like a, a distinction between training camp and being outside of training camp? <laughs> no, you know, balance is something I'm slowly starting to find a little more these days. Um, mm -hmm. But I was, I'm probably the most unbalanced person or was coming up because this is all I did. This is all I cared about. Um, mm. Yeah, I still maintained my, my friendships and relationships and those things. But as far as doing anything else besides this, I, no, I didn't do anything else besides this. And, mm. um, you know, it was, it probably wasn't until, probably wasn't until I blew my knee out or maybe a few years before that I started getting into or getting back into a lot of other things that I did before my writing, my art, my reading, uh, you know, outside things outside of fighting. And it's tough. It's tough to, it's tough to find balance and it's tough to tell people to have balance because you have to give this everything that you have. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to, but if you want to get to as high as you can get to, the only way to get there is to go all in or not, all, or not, but you can still have balance in that, you know, even though this is everything, it doesn't mean you need to shut your life off to the world. It just, you need to understand that there's a time and a place for things um, and not allow them to distract you from this. The, the problem is we feel often that it's, it's one or the other, like we're either all in or we're out partying. You know, or, or, or we're not training or whatever. Um, finding that, you know, ability to be all in and to still see friends, family, work, etc. without falling into some of the traps. Like, like everything can be negative. Even positive things can be negative at times if we don't use them correctly and then... And, and, we allow them to weaken us instead of strengthen us. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's life. Life is all about finding balance and it's a, such a difficult thing to do. What I try to remember, um, is that balance is not something you can really find because, you know, think about balancing on a, a, a ball. You're never just stuck. You're constantly adjusting. And mm -hmm. that's really what, what everything is about. It's, you're constantly adjusting. You can never, you can never really find that perfect center line. You're either too far on the left or too far on the right, and you're constantly hopping over back and forth, back and forth. And that goes for everything in life, in fighting and relationships and um, whatever jobs. The you, you're either you're either pushing too hard or not enough. You're either too too much or too little. And mm -hmm. too much is just as detrimental as too little, although I'm always on the side of doing too much, but it can still be just as negative. You got to find, slowly find that middle ground where, where that, that perfect point is, you know, like where you're at your best, you know, it's like with fighting, you, you don't want to fight too heavy and you don't want to fight too light, you know, <laughs> like where, where's your best point at? And that's, different for everybody you just got to find what works best for you and what works for you won't work for me and vice versa mm. do you think you can be like successful in multiple aspects in your life um i came up with this question uh after tyron woodley lost the belt to kimura usman like a lot of people were like yeah 
he spread himself too thin because of acting and I think rap he had a bunch of things going on and I was like yeah but I'm pretty sure that he said his priorities right but I don't know him of course but that's how it came yeah. up with the question uh, you know it's another difficult thing to answer because you definitely can be great at many things at once it's it's that much more difficult and you have to be very um, focused and driven in order to do that. Most people have a hard enough time being great at one thing, let alone multiple things. Um, and of course, the more you're putting into one, the less you can put into the other. But when you understand that it's about quality of time, not just time itself, that that helps a lot, you know, and I think that's a, a very important thing when it comes to training. It's you can spend eight hours at the gym and not get as much as somebody that can get out of one hour if they're doing it correctly, you know, right. and for me coming up, that's what allowed me to progress so quickly is because my one hour was 10 times better than other people's three hours, you know, because I'm there, I'm focused, I'm driven, I'm doing this for a purpose with intent. And because of that, I got more out of the time I was there, whether it's longer or shorter, doesn't matter. And if you can take that mentality into other aspects of your life, be all in in what you're doing in that moment. Don't be distracted on your phone. Don't be distracted with conversations. Don't be distracted with thinking about what you're doing next. Be in that moment. And if you can do that, you can find the ability to progress in all these different aspects of your life as opposed to just being one while everything else falls apart. Mm. So with quality of time, you basically mean like zoning in or whatever you want to yeah, call so, it. Yeah, so yeah, so quality over quantity. You know, a lot of times we think quantity will equal success, but that's mm. not necessarily accurate. It's 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 the quality of the time that that's important. Now, yeah, of course, if you can do both. A lot of quality and a lot of time, that's even better. Um, but more often than not, we're, we're, we waste a lot of time with, with seeming activity. And it's like we're doing the thing that we're focused on, but we're not putting all of ourselves into it. So we're not getting as much out of it. And the more we can find the ability to stay on the task that we're in at the moment, the more we're going to get out of it and the more we're going to be able to progress in everything that we do. Do you think that's like a, a cultural thing? Because like when, when I had my first job, my boss was like, okay, it was for a supplement company and I had to work in the store and he was like, yeah, you're, you're here for eight hours, but you're never going to work eight hours. I know. So you can read, you can do whatever you want. Just make sure that you do whatever you have to do. I was like, okay. But then my second job, they were like, you're here for eight hours and you're going to work eight hours. But like, it was never possible. Like, I just have to, had to invent work. Yeah, it's 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 a mentality for sure. It's it's obviously certain places and cultures and people instill that more so than others. Um, mm. But regardless, I think it needs to be like you can't you can't nobody else can force another individual to be focused or driven. Mm. You know, you you can't to an extent be like be focused or driven or I'm going to fire you. But then you still have that same problem where people are only doing enough work to not get fired. And mm. that's not good. <laughs> that's not good for anybody. Mm. Um, and that's, that's, that's a problem with a lot of things is we're doing just enough to not fail, whatever the case may be. And we need to hold ourselves to higher standards in, in everything that we do. Like, Everything we do can be perfect. I mean, it can't be, but we can strive for perfection. Now, you can still strive per, for, for perfection and not be defeated just because it's not perfect. That's, that's also that balance with, I want to progress, I want to be better, but I also need to appreciate and love where I'm at at that time instead of letting it defeat me or depress me or all of these things, even especially when there's setbacks and things like that, you know, it's like, oh, geez, I'm not 
where I should be. I'm not down the line farther. I'm not, I didn't have the fight I should have had. I didn't have all these things. You got to take the wins and the losses as they come. And with everything, we can either use them to get better or to get worse. And the more we can set our bar, our bar high um, in ourselves and hopefully in everyone that's around us, the better. I think, I think that's an infectious thing. You know, when, when you're surrounded by people who are pushing themselves, it makes you want to push yourself. You know, that, that's such a big thing about going to Thailand is you're surrounded by people who are there for one purpose and one purpose only. And True. that's the distinction between there and, and every other place is there's not there. There's not people there um, doing cardio. There's not people there just screwing around. People are there for life to 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 be the best they can possibly be. And that's it. That's the only reason they're there. You know, obviously nowadays there's places that aren't that yes. way, but mm. but that's I feel that's the mentality you have to have in things that you want to be great at. You know, if if you don't care, then yeah, just go there and get your workout on and get your sweat on. It's a positive thing, and that's mm. not to say that's negative. It's negative when you want to be at a higher level and you're just half-assing it. Mm. Yeah, the Thais don't like that though. Like. They re well, that's what I noticed. Like, if 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 you tell them you want to fight, they like give you their time and their energy. But like, if you're there just as a tourist, they don't yeah. like you. Yeah, uh, I you know I'm a, I'm a I'm very similar in that way, and you know a lot of that is because I came up under ties. It's like when I'm training people, if they're half-assing it, then I'm gonna half-ass it too. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna I'm not going to give more than you're willing to do yourself. If you mm. want to go all in, then I'm going to go all in too. Mm. And that, that was a big thing coming up. It's like we didn't have a coach over our heads like smacking us, telling us, hey, you need to train harder. You need to do more. It was something that was like if you're here for this purpose, that that's your only option. If you want to fight, you need to be here on these days and times and you need to be putting in the work in and outside of the gym and – that's something that I feel is lost a lot these days. Mm. You know, people aren't willing to do the work unless they're being pushed or, or unless they're getting the pad work. You know, like you don't see people off on their own doing their own thing um, when they're not in the spotlight. And they're never, you're never going to get better if you're not willing to put in the work when it's not glamorous. Mm. Um. What lesson or lessons do you take away from, from your fighting career so far? So many. Everything, you know, everything. Everything you learn in fighting can translate to every aspect of life. When it's setting your goals, you're setting impossible goals and going after them um, will only make you progress and be better. Constantly keeping a humble mind frame all while shooting for the stars constantly is such an important thing i feel for me um just because it keeps you genuine it keeps you humble it keeps you in the right mind frame um and and keeps you from being distracted by glitz and glamour and money and fame and all of these things that aren't the most positive things to go after you know if they come okay um, but if not, that it doesn't matter. You know, I, I'm not doing this for that. You know, I'm doing this to better myself. And if by bettering myself those things come, then great. But if they don't, I'm still doing this anyway. Um, so yeah, so so much, everything, every single thing that I've learned in fighting translates to every other aspect of my life. Mm. And I think that's what's so important about. You know, fighting, martial arts, sports in general, um, so many of the things that you have to learn in those things you need in life, you know, and so many of those things aren't taught in life and so many people don't learn them and they suffer because of it. And, and it's, uh, you know, I feel, I feel like the world would be a better place if everybody did some kind of fighting or something physical. Whether it's, I agree. I agree. whether it's working out, just stretching, running, fighting, uh, sports, it, it really, it, for me, and I think for most people, it, it clears out all the static of life. You know, it 
it, it helps you focus on what's important, who you are, who people are. Um, it gets rid of distractions. It, it, it centers you. Um, it, it does so many positive things. It's, I think it's such an important um, fundamental part of living. What would you say to parents who like um, say that their kids can do combat sports because they're violent to bloody, I don't know, like, because like when I, when I was, I think I was 13, 14, I did karate for a long time. And then I stopped because my parents were like, okay, you can do it, but you can't compete because they didn't want to drive me. So I was like, okay, there's no goal for me. So I just quit. And then I wanted to do boxing. And my mom was like, no, you're not going to box. And I was like, why? And she was like, yeah, you're going to, you're going to end up with an ugly nose. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's uh it's tough man because of course those things can and do happen um and there are ways and to be much safer and healthier and making sure you're at a good gym um with competent instructors and um all those things are, are helpful in that aspect um Yes, there's always going to be risks, of course, um, and we try to minimize those risks as much as we can, but life is risky. Everything we do comes with risk. Every sport we play, every car we drive, everything comes with risks, and it's only a matter of whether you're willing to accept those risks and move forward or not. And, you know, it's, it, it, I think as far as kids go, there's this negative stigma on kids and fighting and all of this. Um, but what I find is there's a hundred times more positive things come from it than the negative things that come from it, especially if you have competent people around and caring people around. Um, people aren't just in there like bashing their brains in, um, you know, and getting stupid. It's, 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 it's a, uh, everybody's learning and growing and developing and doing it in a as healthy a way as possible you know uh, as i said every every physical activity in the world is dangerous running is dangerous uh, baseball and football is dangerous driving a car is dangerous so if you're gonna live your life on what's dangerous and what isn't uh, there's really nothing you can do because everything's dangerous um the the, the what we try to do is minimize the danger um not put ourselves in stupid situations, uh, especially kids, you know, and that's why it's so important to find a good quality gym where they know what the hell they're doing and talking about. If that's the case, you're not in any more danger than you are doing anything else. Um, but it's, it's easy to put that stigma on combat sports, on fighting, on athletics for that matter. Um, and that's, a uh, uh, a trend that's going around these days, you know, with, with trying to make everything safe. And I don't think safety is always a positive thing. You know, a lot of times it can be negative. Uh, I think there's a, d a degree to it and a balance to it. Um, but uh, life is dangerous and it needs to be that way. And it should be that way. It develops you. Mm. How do you know that you found a good gym? Because like my first gym was an MMA gym, and I n I just I just wanted to do MMA, so I came up in the gym and I walked out with like a bruised leg, and I was like, okay, I'm cool now. I'm doing MMA. This is how it's supposed to be. But after a while, you you like I I went to train into Sweden and and Gustafsson's gym, and I was like, wait a minute, they're doing best each other's heads in here. I'm like, this is different. Um, yeah, that's that's a tricky thing because you probably won't know you're at a bad gym until later on down the road. Um, one, I would say research, ask people, you know, mm -hmm. find out, um, especially if there's a uh, high level people that go there that like they would know. Um, and you, you need to progress in a healthy way. If, if you're coming out of there injured, especially in the beginning, they are probably not at the best gym. It's it's a, it should be a slow and steady progression to develop and to get better and to um, for me it's like if if your gym isn't teaching technique and fundamentals, get the fuck out of there, man. Like they're skipping so much of what's important. You know, 
and and so much of what's not taught, especially these days, because people don't know what they're doing, is is fundamentals and slowing down and and technique, um, and accuracy and balance and all these things that have aren't just about hitting. It, it's giving you the ability to hit when in the time is there, but we 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 a lot of people want to skip over all that and get right to the hitting part, and that's not the smartest way to go about things. It's definitely not the healthiest way and it's, you're not going to progress in that way. So yeah, as I said, a lot of it is trial and error. Unfortunately, um, you know, there aren't a lot of good gyms out there. Um, and that's, that's the problem. You got to find the best gym you can find around. And, um, if this is what you really want to do, then you need to sacrifice and go find the best that you can, whatever that may be. Um, I was very fortunate in the gym that I went to was the best one around and the best one in the country. And it just kind of worked out that way. Um, but if it hadn't been, I would have traveled anywhere to get what mm. I needed to get and sacrificed whatever I needed to in order to do that. Um, it's In a lot of ways, it's easier now because... You can research better now. You can reach out to fighters and individuals who would know now. Um, but simultaneously, the problem is there's a lot of people out there who look good on the surface and make you think they know what they're talking about, but don't because of how easy it is to get popular online and mm -hmm. viewed in a certain way. But the real work isn't being done. It's only being done for a camera, and it's tough, man. I, I, I couldn't say exactly what you should or shouldn't do. Just try to be, try to be aware and um, pay attention to what's really going on, and um, you'll you'll find the right places. And like I said, like reach out and ask people. It's it's pretty easy mm. to do. Did you did you, um, did you start out in CSA? No, I started with Master Tati in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't. I didn't move up to CSA until, geez, six years ago. Okay. So, yeah, I was. I was doing this sport for probably twelve years before I went up there. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, because I, I I went up there after I fought Sakadao. Sakadao was my last fight in Vegas, um, and then as I was training for my next fight was when I blew my knee out and then um, I moved up there after that and then I lived up there for five years I think uh, but now I'm down in San Diego. Mm. Um, you also have a blog and you have a, a new book that's uh, been released recently called Soul. Is, yeah. is writing like a way of winding down for you and like how did you come up with the idea? Uh, I've always written, you know, a, a little bit coming up um, years and years ago. This was probably 13 years ago in the MySpace days, 14, maybe 12 years ago. I don't know how long ago that was. But um, I wrote, you know, I always, always kept track in journals of when I'd go overseas and fight and all the crazy experiences I've had doing that life life threatening experiences i've had doing that and uh one time i just i just posted one up um about the this time i went to china and fought in uh sen Chao over there when i got my skull fractured and all this stuff so i posted it up online just for to have something on my page and uh i didn't think anything of it and people were very positive about it you know they 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 enjoyed it a lot they said how they could really feel what I was feeling there and envision everything. And it just motivated me to do more. And the biggest thing it motivated me to do was really keep track of a lot of these stories uh, uh, from especially traveling overseas and stuff. Anytime I'd go overseas, I'd, I'd journal about it and keep track of it. And then um, every once in a while, I would, I would post something about it online and just started doing it more and more, you know, um, not always about fight stuff, sometimes just thoughts I had and, you know, people, I don't know why people seem to enjoy it. Um, 
I don't think I write very well <laughs> at all. Um, and I try to be better all the time, but, but, uh, I don't know. I think, I think I'm honest in, in what I put out there. And I think that comes across, even if, uh, the way I write isn't, uh, good, uh, or, or as good as it could be. So it's, it's been a progressive thing. And, um, I wrote, the first book I wrote was, uh, my dancing with Sanchai book. And, um, I, I kind of always plan on writing a book one day. I, I thought I was going to write an entire book about my whole life, but then I realized that I didn't know when I was going to start because at what point, like, where do you put the end? Like, I don't know how to do that. I don't, I don't know when that's going to be because even when I'm done fighting, I'm still, there's probably still going to be stuff I want to write about. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided just to put that one out just as a one-off, you know, and see how it went and, um, it went really well. You know, I was, I was very surprised at, uh, the feedback I got and the amount of people who bought it. And from that point on, I was much more motivated to continue writing. And, um, the soul book was just a, uh, it was really just a collaboration of me and Johnny Riley's, uh, writings. Both of us have done separately as well as, um, some of the scenes behind the scenes from uh, the film we shot are in there and there's artwork in there. And, you know, that's kind of a mix of, of really about everything right now. I'm currently working on, uh, my next book, which technically will be my first or, or the start of me. Cause it's going to be about how I came up in my life and, um, everything that led up to the day I walked into the gym. Um, and that's, that's what I'm working on right now. Mm, that's interesting. I love the blog, by the way. I think you write very well. It's oh, just thank you. Because, because you like it's just how you represent the message. It's just like it clicks immediately. That's why I love so like the the social media warrior of fighters. <laughs> oh, that was that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> because yeah. I I, I just it. met a guy like that. <laughs> I was so, I held my tongue for a really long time with that, but it got to a point when I was like, this is just ridiculous. Like, and it still is. Obviously, my my one blog is not going to change anything but i think when people see that especially someone where i'm at they 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 recognize that you don't need to do that or that shouldn't be your focus and goal your focus and goal is to be better and to put the work in and, and um to progress but nowadays it's like people don't care about that at all as long as it looks good on instagram said the truth what was the uh, what was the driving force behind your second book? Well, my second my second book was really just a continuation. Um, you know, as I said, I've I've always planned on writing a book about my life, and the first book was just on that one fight um, and everything that led up to it. But I wanted to I wanted to give people a deeper understanding of where I came from, how I grew up what led me to this point of inevitably getting to where I'm at today. And, um, I, I just wanted to get it all done. I mean, a lot, so much of my writing I, I do for myself, you know, I'm glad that people like it. Um, but a lot of it is so much of it is things that I'm telling myself, you know, things I'm not, I'm not preaching to people ever. I I'm never, ever, ever in preaching to people what I'm always doing is saying things that I feel and that I recognize and that I'm aware of and, and that speak to me and I put them out there and if they speak to other people, great, but I'm not, I'm not ever trying to tell people how to live or how to think or how to be. I'm just trying to share what I feel and who I am. And because I didn't have that coming up, you know, I didn't have someone to look at or to view or to hear from or to relate to in the things that I was going through uh, all throughout my life, you know, and I think that's why so many of us feel so alone, especially in difficult circumstances, is because we don't realize that everybody goes through so many of the same things. And there's so many people going through exactly what you're going through, even if you feel like the only one. And the more that I've put my story out there and the things that I struggle with, the more feedback I've gotten from people saying 
how they relate to it and how um, nice it is to hear someone at my stage being honest about these things because too often we view people in the spotlight as not going through the same things you go through. And it's a very skewed perspective on the struggles that they went through and that they still go through to this day. So it's always been important for me to be very open and vocal about who I am, the things I go through, the things I feel and think. And, you know, of course, there's always going to be some negativity that comes with that. But but I think for the most part, people understand where I'm coming from and that I'm not um, trying to preach or demonize anything or, or elevate anything. I'm just trying to share who I am and the things that I've learned. And I hope that they help other people along the way, even if even if it's only one person, that that's enough for me to be motivated to continually do this. Mm. How, how, how did you develop this mindset? Because you, you obviously have like a healthy, positive mindset. Um, is it like through reading or through living life, the combination? Because like a lot of people, they go through life and they obviously have their struggles, but like at a certain point in time, it's like they get, I'm looking for the word, I'm not, not sad, more like uh, frustrated. Yeah, yeah. It's well, as you said, it was a it's a progressive thing. It's a um, a constant, constantly learning, constant, well, constantly motivating yourself to be better, and not let um, your failures set you back, and 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 keep you in the place that you're at. I think it's a uh, as long as you're willing to continually grow, to continually put yourself out there, to continually risk failing, risk looking stupid, risk being the only one speaking up or doing something, um, then you're going to get better and you're going to progress and you're going to get stronger and you're going to get braver and you're going to get more vocal and you're going to get more um, secure in the things you think and feel and believe. It's a, uh, it's a steady progression. You know, it's not, uh, it doesn't happen overnight and nothing happens overnight. It's, uh, we either steadily get better or we steadily get worse. And you have to try to maintain your sights set on something higher than yourself. And that's the ongoing, unending battle of life, I feel, um, whether we keep pushing or we quit. What advice would you give to people who are afraid to go after their dreams? <laughs> I would, my advice is it's okay to be afraid. Everybody's afraid to go after things. Everyone that's achieved anything was afraid as they did it. You don't get courage until you do the thing you're afraid of. Mm. You know, I, I, I say there's only two ways. <laughs> To have courage, one, you're a crazy person and you don't know any better, or two, <laughs> or two, you're scared and go forward anyway. And mm. I mean, that's really what courage is. It's is being afraid of failure, being afraid of every bad thing that can go wrong, being worried about all the negativity, all 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 the horrible things that can happen, and going forward anyway. And that is how you progress. And it can be anything from people that don't want to step foot outside their front door, you know, just take one step and then step back in. And then maybe tomorrow you take two steps and then maybe tomorrow you don't take any steps, but, but then you go back to one and it's, it's, it's a slow, steady progression in anything you want to get better at. And as I said, with, with fighting, it's definitely that way that there, there are huge leaps you can make, of course, but with those leaps, you have to risk, as big of a leap of failure um and you take the jump see where you land and go from there okay that didn't work what will work try something different move forward um sometimes you're going backwards and you gotta be aware and adjust and, and you know all of those things you know what 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 applies to one thing in life applies to everything what what 
how you get good at one thing is how you get good at everything. Everything imaginable is it's all the same thing, really. There's no there's no different way to get better at something else. There's different techniques, of course, but the mind frame and mentality and progression is all the same. It's all the same. Fundamentals, basics, slow, steady progression, taking big leaps when you can, set, always setting your sights high, um, not f falling back on staying in failure, using it to progress, all of those things, you know, it's all the same. It's the same in everything. And, and I would try to relate that, relay that to anyone coming up who's afraid. Like, it's okay to be afraid. Be afraid. Go forward. That's how you get better. You get better by things you're scared of. You don't get better by things you have no care for or you mm. assume you're just going to be great at. There's no progression there or very little. Do you think like acknowledging the fear makes the fear kind of go away? Yeah, I think I think as I said before like with emotions, emotions are meant to be felt. Don't don't block them out recognize them be like i'm afraid and i'm going forward anyway it doesn't matter how scared i am it doesn't matter how much i shake i'm gonna go forward and the more you can do that the stronger you're gonna be the fear inside might never go away but how how you handle it gets is what gets better um mm. and that, that that's another thing i really learned in fighting because for whatever reason for me i've always been very calm when it comes to fighting and i've never had dealt with the same kinds of fears as, as most people deal with. Um, you know, I still deal with my own hesitations and concerns, but uh, mm. it's one of those things that I recognized even the highest level of people are still scared to fight, <laughs> you know? And I was like, I, I don't get it. You've got 200 fights. How can you be scared? Because they're still scared of the same things you're scared of in the beginning. You want to do good. You want to win. You don't want to get hurt. Um, all of these things, uh, you want to perform, you want to fight to your best ability. Those don't go away. If anything, they get worse because the pressure mm. gets more, the, the, the competition gets better, the expectation increases. So in a lot of ways, those do not go away at all. And they will tend to actually grow with, with your growth, but mm. your ability to handle them, your ability to recognize them and not let them keep you from moving forward is what you develop in 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 facing these things you're afraid of. Mm. So, and your whole career, the feeling before a fight like, was like kind of always the same. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to a degree. I mean, I've all, for some reason fighting calms me down a lot, mm. too much actually, to where I have to really kind of amp myself up in the back and be like, yeah, we're gonna, we have to go fight now. You got to get going. Um, yeah, I've always, had, I was, I've always had a strange thing when it comes to fighting and violence and kind of um, extreme situations. Mm -hmm. they, they, I don't know. I don't know if they calm me down or if I'm just able to not be distracted by things most people are like these feelings I get in there you know I, I it's not to say I'm a robot or anything but but uh, yeah I, I, a lot of times it's it's outside things that distract me more than the fight itself like what does this fight mean who am I in the fight world uh, you know um, when it becomes more of a business that's when that's when I get distracted personally, you know, when I, when I lose sight of the purity of, of the fight itself and get distracted by all outside forces, that's, that's, that's when it becomes kind of negative, you know, like, like for so long, I never, I never really processed who I was in this country, in this world as, as a, an American fighter. And, you know, that I was this, um, kind of poster boy for the sport here it is something like I kind of understood, but I never really kind of processed it. You know, it just seemed, it seemed crazy to me. So I didn't really think about it, you know, and I just fought and 
did my thing and this was all the way past Sanchai and you know all the way up until you know line fight um you know i think that was the point when i started it started weighing on me like mm -hmm. i i i am this person so i need to be this person you know whereas before it was i'm just naturally this person this is who i am and if i'm genuine and honest with who i am those things will come out naturally but when I tried to be that way, it, 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 it came out in a negative way for me uh, internally more than externally. But uh, um, it began to weigh on me, like the weight mm -hmm. of, of being this person in the sport, being this person for this country and, and for all the people coming up. Um, it started to weigh on me and, and it just became really heavy and uh, I had to get rid of all that and just let all that go and realize all of the things that I want to be, I am if I'm just genuine with myself. I don't need to try to be this positive role model for fighters or for anyone for that matter. Like I'm just, I am that way if I am honest with who I am. I don't need to try to be that way. I need to try to be the best I am, but not not on the outside, as long as I'm genuine with, with, with myself and, and honest with myself and, and doing it for those reasons, it will naturally come out that way to the people who view me. And um, that was something I learned, had to learn, uh, you know, not too, too long ago. Mm -hmm. um, do you think like social conditioning made people afraid to pursue their dreams? Uh, this is based on, on, on Belgium, of course, but like here in school, people get get punished when they fail a test or ridiculed even and yeah. people like people like to throw around terms like talent or luck or good genetics you know yeah so much of so much of what we are instilled with coming up is so negative and terrible and um keeps so much of us pressed down and um uh, you know keep keeps us from going reaching higher and and you know some people myself included would say that's um on purpose and um, there's a reason for that and um it's easier to be in control of people that are pressed down and and, and limited and in their mindset um and it keeps them imprisoned in themselves. And, you know, even if it's not intentional, it is definitely what is instilled in us coming up. And we're not motivated to be creative, to be, to be who we are, to be individuals, to have crazy dreams, to, to go for them, to um, have these ideas and thoughts that maybe nobody else has. You know, we, we, we are punished for doing that. And eventually, you know, if you don't have a, a strong enough fire and desire in yourself, your that light that was burning inside of you is going to go out or it's going to be extremely dimmed. And that is the plague that is across the world and so many, so much of it because it it makes things safer for the people who are benefiting from it. And the people who are, who are benefiting from it are the people who are in the tippy top 1% of the world. You know, if, if, if everyone was their own individual, if everyone was unique, if everyone was pursuing um, what truly was in their heart and mind, and it'd be a very different world. I think it'd be a very, a much better world, um, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be better for certain individuals and unfortunately those individuals are the ones who are um, controlling a lot of this stuff so i think that's you know that's why i'm so motivated to speak and to get my words out there and things i've learned coming up like so much so much of what i now know it's like i knew when i was younger i just didn't know that i knew it i felt it and i wasn't gonna go along the same path as everybody else was but if i actually understood it more back then i think i would have made um much more progression earlier on instead of wasting away 23 years of my life um 
living in that mindset, you know, but, but, but at the same time, I think it was important to go through that and to have that, um, because I, I'm motivated that much more to help others as well as help myself never be there again. Mm. These, these days we have like a lot of blogs who claim that like masculinity is on decline and stuff. Um, my blog focuses on masculinity as well. Like what does it mean for you to be a man? I, I, you know, it's, I think being a man, being a woman there, yeah, of course there's, there's, there's aspects of that, but, but more, mm -hmm. more importantly for me is being, being a strong individual, being, being a strong human being, a strong spirit, a strong person, um, whether there's certain things people want to view as masculine or feminine, you know, what, that's just a way to kind of keep people in, in a, in a box, I feel, but I think it's never, for me, it's never settling for the way things are and to, as I said, be happy with what I have and where I'm at, but to continually push myself in every area of my life that I can, because I never want to get to a point when I just stop. I think when you stop, you die. As soon as you stop, you, 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 you start sliding down, you know, and that's, that's just the way that life is. You know, if you don't, you can't, you can't just stay in the middle. Like you're either getting better or worse. And that's the only way to do it. And, and, and we can't just sit on our achievements. You know, it's, I think it's important to recognize them and to view where you're at and the things you've done and overcome and accomplished. But that, that end goal should never, you should never get to it. You know, it should be a, it should always move away from you because you, as you get better, you get to a point and that goal goes farther. You know, it's, it's, it's again, just the same thing with fighting. As soon as you know one thing, there's more to learn. There's more to learn. There's always more. There's always more to learn. And even on the things that you do learn, you have to maintain them, or else they go away. They don't stay there forever. You don't. You don't just learn how to jab and never have to work on it again. You know. And 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 it can always be better. You never. You can't perfect anything. And I think that's such an important mentality to have in life that you can never perfect anything you can always be better you can always have better communication better relationships better health um better mentality better spirituality wh whatever the case may be uh that's something i try to always keep in mind every day there there's always something i can do to be better even if i'm stuck in bed in a full body cast, like I can always improve something. I can always work on my mentality. I can always work on my focus. I can always work on my feelings. I can always work on so many things, so many things we can work on regardless of our limitations. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you sometimes sit down and like look back where you come from, what you've gone through, the good times, bad times? Yeah, I do. Um, like right now, while I'm writing this book, so much stuff is like coming back to me that I didn't remember or, th or ever really think about. You know, I uh, so often I'm I'm thinking ahead and thinking about being better that I that I don't often recognize where I came from and how much I've done. And you know that it can be a good and a bad thing, like the bad in the way that maybe I don't always. Um, appreciate the things that I that I have done you know and but at the same time that keeps me from getting an ego about it too because I don't I don't uh you know I don't feel better than anybody I don't feel I don't feel like I'm higher up than somebody that's starting on their first day because I've always viewed it in that we're all at the same point in an infinite scale you know like if if there is no end we're basically all at the same point because because there is no perspective for who's who's more ahead than somebody else because it's unending. You can never be, there's no finish line. So I might have done more, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Like to me, we're all, we're all beginners, I guess, you know, and I've, 
I think I've always maintained that mentality and it's been a very positive thing um, and always kept me motivated and humble and pushing myself. But at the same time, it's it's probably kept me from enjoying and appreciating some things that I've done at the same time. But that's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and now the last question. What's the, the one life lesson, le lesson that you want to share with people? I think the biggest one is to never give up. You know, no matter how difficult it is, how impossible it may seem, how far off your goals may be, just don't ever give up. And no matter how slow it is, no matter how far away it is, or impossible it may seem or even be, if you have something that you want to go after, like, don't ever stop, you know, set your, set your sights on something and go for it, regardless of what comes up, because things will happen. You can be guaranteed of that, especially if you're going after um, a huge goal. It's like the bigger the goal, the bigger the setbacks probably will be. So prepare yourself for them. Know that they're going to come. Move forward anyway. Don't ever stop. You know, like like as long as you're moving, then that's positive. Even if even if you're moving in the wrong direction, you know, you recognize it, adjust your course, and and, and keep it moving. It's it's when you stop is quitting is when you really fail. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. There's a. This was amazing. Yeah, man, my pleasure.